So check it out. Here we are. It is Tuesday, and each and every Tuesday from now until basically the end of the season, we're going to talk to one uh, Eric Devendorf. Devo, what's up, brother? How are you, man? All is good, man. I can't complain too much, you know, with everything going on, just trying to stay positive and, and keep things moving. Yeah, you've been a, uh, a very busy guy of late uh, before we get into talking about the Cuse. Uh, you've got some pretty cool things going on, working, uh, trying to get some money for some local businesses, man. Yeah, so I was inspired by Barstool, who I saw do it um, yep. for New York City. Obviously, now they're doing it around the country. So I just wanted to try to get it together here locally in Syracuse. And um, the first few days we did it, we raised, we raised like 25000 Now, after a few weeks, I think we're up to almost 62000 So um, it, it's definitely going to help out a lot of small businesses. I wish we could help out everyone. Um, obviously, you know, that's not the case. But um, just trying to help out as, as many small businesses as we can in the area. Um, I think we all know that, um, you know, when small businesses are doing well, um, then the community does better as a whole. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just, just trying to help out as much as we can. Which I think it's 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 a wild thing that nobody realizes outside of Syracuse how big the Syracuse faithful really are, right? Oh, man, like just after I think it was a day and a half we raised like 20000 you know. So it just goes to show when you, you know, put out a worthy cause and – a cause everybody wants to get behind. Syracuse community comes out in full force. And, you know, not only the community, but just people who have had experience with Syracuse, you know, right. the Syracuse family. It's been people who've reached out to me all over the country, um, you know, just talking about what's going on and, um, you know, how th- how they've had wonderful experiences with, with the Syracuse community. So I'm just thankful for all those people that have, you know, rallied behind and, and showed support. Yeah, it's awesome, obviously, what you're doing. And then Barstool, I mean, they're at like $18 million for, yeah. for uh, around the country. It's crazy, man. Amazing. They're, they're, Barstool, I mean, they've done an unbelievable job. And, uh, you know, I've watched every single one of their videos and just seeing the faces of those people, yep. you know, when they, they know they've been chosen. And, I mean, that's those are people's livelihoods, man. You know, like people depend on, on their small businesses to feed their family, to, uh, you know, to do all types of things. So, um, when when you see those videos, it, it it's pretty awesome, man. Knowing that um, they're helping out that many people, it's wild to see where Prez came from and how Barstool came up to where they are now and what they're doing. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know he kind of caught a little <laughs> bad rap from from people, but uh, you know he's kind of he's a brash guy. I mean, he, his delivery can be a little bit brash, but yeah. I mean, what he's doing right now, I mean, regardless of you know what he's done in the past. Um, this is something that you you want to get behind, and um, you know I, I fully support it 100. percent Like you said, he's raised 18 million. I mean, you know these. Where else would these businesses get it? I mean, right. obviously you could get some grants and stuff, but that, not all businesses qualify for that. And, and obviously the government's not doing anything. So um, it's it's us, the people, that we have to depend on each other and and really come together. And um, I think Barstool has showed that you know when you put something out with a worthy cause and um, people get behind it, and you know, obviously, they have they have big money behind it. Um, it's been awesome to see, and, and you know, just like I said, they inspired me, and we're doing it here on a on a smaller scale. So, um, I think you know, the big thing is you want to show that you could do it here in your community, mm-hmm. and that and that in turn, um, you know, goes to other communities, and they they start the same thing. That's really the big picture. That's really how I was looking at it. I want it right. I want people to see that. Hey he's doing it why can't i do it and, right. and then it kind of it's kind of like a trickle down effect to other communities around around the country absolutely i love it man so getting into the uh the basketball end of things obviously we've uh, had the last couple weeks off with the uh, the crazy covid season that we're in and we we're supposed to play florida state tomorrow but we're playing pit uh what do you think uh, how the season's gone so far for the boys and and uh where do you see it going well at this point i mean we'll 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 take five guys off the street to play. I mean, <laughs> right? It, it, any way we can play, man, uh, these guys just want to get out there and compete and go up and down. I mean, it's been, what, 20, 21 days yeah. since the last time they played. And I know practice has probably been inconsistent. They haven't been, been able to go every day. So um, I think these, these guys are just happy to get out there and play again. You know, obviously it's going to be some rust. It's going to be, you know, some timing issues and things like that. Um, but the biggest part, let's just get out there and play and, and hopefully we can get some consistency. And um, I think the more consistency we have, um, the better we'll be as a team. This this team has a pretty high ceiling, man. I really mm-hmm. liked what I saw in the beginning. Obviously, with all the pauses, it's it's messing everyone up. But um, we have some talented talented guys on the team. Um, we have some older leaders, and and we have some depth this year, which you yeah. know we're going to need because 
Um, who knows? You know, somebody might get COVID, have to sit out. We saw right. Barama. Barama got hurt. Um, but now he's back. He, he's back today for uh, or tomorrow for Pittsburgh, which will help um, help Marat go to his normal position yeah. at the four. I think having Barama is huge, man. It just he's that anchor in that middle. And you know, before he went down, he was really starting to roll and really um, get comfortable in, in that uh, in that middle position. So um, it'll be fun for these guys just to get back out there and start playing again. Obviously, like ACC big men compared to uh, Big East big men, which we used to have like two big guys always, right? And now, yeah. now the center position just a different game in the ACC and the way things run, uh, and and we really don't have outside of Barama, we don't have that guy. I think just in general, right? Basketball has yeah. transitioned to more so up and down three point shooting dunks. That's just how the game is now. You know, everyone is is tall and lanky and mm-hmm. they're skilled. They can step outside and shoot. We're seeing it in the NBA. There's no more, you know, back to the basket guys really where right. they could you know, get to throw it down to him and go ahead and make a play. You know, you have, uh, 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 what's his, uh, the guy at Denver, uh, I forget his name, I'm drawing a blank, but he, he's probably one of the guys you could throw it down to, but even then he can step out. Um, so it's just, it's just about transitioning being able to adapt. Um, I think Barama, he's good because he can move, he can get out there, he can be active. Obviously we're, we don't want him shooting any threes, but um, <laughs> he, he's a guy that can definitely make a difference in there. And he's a four-year guy. He knows what the zone is. Yeah. He knows what to expect. He's played in big games. Um, so it's just going to help us to have his presence out there. No, you were saying about the depth of the team. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen an SU team go as deep as this one has. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and a lot of it is you know, probably due to the fact that – It's forced, that, yeah. Yeah, it, it's forced, but I like it. I mean, I like it because now we're giving these younger guys earlier minutes. So in return, when we go, you know, to the latter part yep. of the season, when we may need those guys to have minutes, they know what it's like. They've had that experience, and um, you know, I think these freshmen that we have are good. You know, we we'll talk about Kadari and Woody. Um, these guys really came in early part of the season and showed no fear. Just came in there and played. And they weren't worried about making mistakes or looking over their shoulder, seeing if coach is going to take them out. Right. And that's what that's what coach likes. You know, if anyone who's played for coach, he doesn't want a guy who's worrying about everything, who's looking over his shoulder. He's he wants a guy that you know, if you make a mistake, you're going to play through it, and um, you got to show him that doesn't affect you. And, and I think we have the the guys on the team that could do it. We really have a team this year um, that plays with no fear and. Um, and that'll definitely help us, you know, try to squeak out some close games. And we really could be seven and zero if you think about it. Right. We lost that oh, Rutgers, yeah. and we we really could have won that game. You know, obviously we didn't play, um, you know, the way we're capable of playing. But Rutgers is a great team too. So I, I think this team that we have, um, with the depth, with the talent, um, you know, with some veteran leadership, you know, we can make some noise going forward. But first, we just have to we have to get some consistency, man, with these games. Yeah. We have to play. We can't play one game and then skip nine and then try to, you know what I mean? Could you imagine that when you were playing and just you'd be like, oh, my God, this is ridiculous right now? Well, just the timing. It just yeah. throws, you know, athletes are like, like we're, we have a routine every single yep. morning yep. when we wake up. We do this, we do it. And now when that routine, and I think with any, when every person who has a routine and is broken, it can throw you off, right? And, yeah. And, you know, this is kind of the biggest throw off of them all, like, having to pause for 20 straight days and not being able to get into the gym where you practice it every day. So, um, you know, we have to pivot, you know, like everyone has to pivot during this time and, um, you just have to find a way to adapt. And, you know, the biggest thing is just keeping yourself in shape. I think conditioning is going to be huge for, for all these teams in college going forward. The teams that are really in shape the most, um, I think they'll have the most success going forward because the skills will be there. Mm -hmm. Obviously there'll be some rust, there'll be some missed shots, but, you know, are you in shape to uh, continue to play throughout those whole 40 minutes of the game? You were saying with Bayheim and, and the look, and I know you've gotten that look many a times in your career there. Uh, <laughs> and, and and it's funny to watch on TV because you're like, oh, man, he's about to tear his ass up, right? So you know it's coming, but, like, as a player, are you like, oh, man, this is not going to be fun? Yeah, so for me, when he looked at me, I looked right back at him. So that was <laughs> right, right. That was just kind of me. I, I was that, and that's why Beheim, like he, he loved me. Like he was, because he knew I, I wasn't gonna go in a shell. Or uh, when he yelled at me, I wasn't. I was gonna go back at him. And yep. I was gonna try to prove him wrong. And, and I think that's the big thing with these guys. They really got to know that it's nothing personal. Like he wants to win. This is what he loves to do. He loves to, to win basketball games, and more than anything else, I think he might 
you know, he may love that more than his kids a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but I mean, you can't you can't take anything personal, man. You just gotta take it like a grain of salt. Um, you know, look at what he's trying to tell you, and then go out there and, and bust your butt. That's yeah. the only thing you can do. You can't worry about all the other things. We've all been chewed out by a coach a time or two. It's just funny to see it on that level because you know it's because he gets that look in his face, and the camera goes right to him on TV. And you're like, oh man, this is gonna be bad. Yeah, and usually, and usually it's right. I mean, usually yeah. he has a, you know, he's right when he's going at you. Um, but at times it might not. You you might look at him like, dang, coach, what I do? <laughs> but um, again, man, you just got to play through it. And he wants guys who, you know, have thick skin and can play through those mistakes and and play through it when he's when he's getting on you. And um, and I think you know, for a player individually. Um, when you can play through that, it's just going to make you better. Well, brother, I appreciate it, Devo, man. We're going to talk every week, and uh, we'll chat next Tuesday, man. Awesome. Look forward to it, man.